Okay. Uh, welcome, folks. We've got a good first session to uh, to get started on here. Uh, we've got five players and two guest star personas. Um, so we are going to start with character creation, doing sort of a, a day in the life of each of our uh, players' characters. Um, Ari, could you tell us your uh, your name and who you'll be playing? Uh, my name is Ari or Erina. Either one of those is fine. And I will be playing... Um, I will be playing Nadine, who is a bounty hunter with the mythos of Lady Luck. Excellent. Uh, and next, we've got Jacob. Well, I'm Jacob, and I'm going to be playing Finn with me, who is a real estate agent with the myth of the Church Grim. Church Grim. Thank you. And Raina. Um, I'm Raina. I'll be playing Lexi, who is an EMT with the mythos of Pandora and her box. Pandora. And uh, Tim. Hello, I am Tim. I will be playing uh, Jack. That is, he is a boxer, and he will have the mythos of Cyborg from the DC Comics. Excellent. Uh, and to Cyborg's right, we've got uh, Ella. I am, I am Ella. Ella. I will, I will be, be playing, playing Matilda, who, who is a 7 11 cashier in her 40s. Uh, uh, her mythos is the glamour of silent film era. So we'll, we'll see, see how, how that goes. goes. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Uh, so the way we build these characters uh, is with four parts of uh, four, four, four pillars of your everyday normal life. Um, so uh, Ari, could you uh, tell us what what makes your character, you know, tick? Like, what what are these four theme books that are going to be the the foundation of who you are uh, in your normal life? Sure. So, um, it would be my routine as a bounty hunter. Um, my identity is Justice wears a mask and carries a debt. I'm just the one collecting it. She loves um, uh, this job and routine because she really wants to fight for justice. She really wants to fight the bad guys. And in fact, um, in her story, she often sees herself as a vigilante. <clears throat> Within her training, uh, she is she excels in close quarter combat, uh, which is basically a PhD in kicking ass. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she knows how to do Krav Maga, and that's where most of her expertise is in. As her logo, she also has a defining relationship, which is an ex lover. Um, she. Is always, always running, running into her, and it's been an on and off relationship, relationship but, but they always have each other's back because this ex lover also has a strong um, desire to fight for justice. So they, they often call up upon each other. <clears throat> and as her positions, she actually has a home base in an abandoned warehouse. Uh, that's where she kind of stays, that's where she kind of has her positions, positions, and also her bounty hunting, hunting equipment. Uh, that's, that's just, just her home base for uh, both her routine and her for a vigilante, um, I guess, night job as well. Okay. Uh, so let's let's start fleshing this out. Um, so you can open up your character sheet there and 
we're going to add those themes one at a time. So what what do you think is the the one of those that uh, you want to start with? Um, I'll, I'll do, do routine, routine first, first uh, which, which is Bounty Hunter. Uh, and if you if you edit your character sheet, will that show up uh, live here? Um, let's see. I am editing it right now. Okay. Let's try saving something. See if that pops up on on my screen. Then I had locked it. Uh, let's see. Uh, does that change anything? Uh, looks like it. Oh, perfect. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Uh, okay, so for each of the theme books, those four pillars, there are four questions to ask. Uh, for routine, uh, the first question that you're going to ask is question A. Uh, so could you read that for us and uh, give us your, your answer of why that's sort of the, the core of your routine theme book? Sure. So the question is, what do you do with your time? And I, I think I mentioned this, but <laughs> bounty hunting. <laughs> she does bounty hunting. Um, that, that is the core of her routine. Okay. Uh, so you can put that in as your, your first tag there. And that is going to give you uh, a, a, a plus one to any role that has to do with, you know, the skills that you have as a bounty hunter. Um what what other questions uh, did you want to answer for your routine theme book? Hmm. Uh, um, I actually have some you, notes. Who helps you? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, I was going to say, I actually have some notes, and I actually answered some questions already. Uh, for B, I, I said, said, what privileges come with the territory of what you do? And it is license for use of force. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. uh, and then uh, I guess I'll write this down real quick. And then with F, I said, it's a question that says, what specific activity do you engage in as part of your main occupation? And I put sketch tracing. Do you guys happen to know what sketch tracing is? I didn't know when I found out. No, what is skip tracing? It's kind of legal. <laughs> it's a legal way okay. to bounty hunters. Um, it's kind of overstepping a lot of legality and like authority, but it's to. Um, Search on people. It's a legal way to search um, records and uh, email or social media and like very private stuff about the person who's fleeing from authority. Um, so a lot of fun stuff. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Uh, well, we'll see how that that plays into things. Cool. <laughs> so I just imagine a lot of rummaging through trash cans and maybe uh, <laughs> trespassing. <laughs> but we'll see. Nice. Um, okay, so for our, our guest stars here, they are going to be sort of NPCs in a uh, a, a scene that you set up for us. So tell us a little bit about uh, one instance where you were using your your routine theme book, uh, your your bounty hunting. Um, give us a little, a little sense of you know what your character's life is. So set the scene and then uh, two boots uh, assign assign him a character to. Uh, play as an NPC 
and we'll take it from there. Sure. All right. Um, so Nadine is running down the crowded city streets. Uh, a man is fleeing. Um, there is a warrant for his arrest, and he's been fleeing uh, and not coming to his court dates. Uh, not a lot of fun. So she is running down this crowded street trying to catch this guy. Um, and she cuts through a hallway, or not hallway, alleyway to uh, try to meet him and cut him off. Um, I suppose, um, Boots, if you... In, in her story, she, she has an ex-lover who's also kind of like this justice-fighting queen. <laughs> um, uh <-huh. laughs> if you'd like to maybe play as her, maybe they run into each other. I'm not sure. Uh, sure. I am uh, I am happy to do that. I'm also happy to be the fugitive. Uh, whatever you like. I, which do you prefer? <laughs> I'd probably be um, better at the fugitive. Mm, uh, okay, not in well, terms of me being better than Boots, but me being better than the other <laughs> other role. Sure. I uh, you know, I would I would uh so so who is the ex lover? Um uh let me make up a name. I'm not good at the oozing, I gotta say. <laughs> Let's say it's Renee, because I think okay. I have Renee Montoya. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, so I think that, uh, when, uh, Nadine goes and, and turns, um, through, uh, through this al uh, alley to go and, like, uh, uh, chase, uh, uh, chase down this punk, uh, Renee is, um, is already there uh and she like has her police scanner all set up and was like obviously like waiting for this and uh i i hop out and i'm about to go and nab the person that you have been working so hard to get Uh, Nadine is sees that last minute and she runs and uh, accidentally tackles into her uh, while fighting for the fugitive. Um, and they're both on the ground, disappointed and looking at the fugitive as he is running still. Um, Nadine's like, "Oh my God, you again! Some some cops, you are You're running after my contact again. I could have had him alone. I didn't need your help." Yeah, but it's uh it's a lot easier for me when you do uh when you do the legwork for me. And uh Nadine just kinda rolls her head and she sighs <laughs> and she's like, You're making you letting him get away and she starts to run after him again. Fable, what is it that you uh you did that that she's chasing you down for? I mean, perhaps there are many things, but uh with a bounty on your head, what would what, what might be the most uh uh, expensive thing that you've uh, been been. Uh, I uh, yeah, I get what done. you mean. Um, yeah. If they're outsourcing it to a separate thing, that means it's not urgent. But the fact that they're still going after it means it's important. So probably some sort of uh, uh, money related thing, possibly lots of embezzlement, uh, maybe robbery that wasn't armed, something like that. Okay, and uh, what what did you? buy with all of this money that you stole somehow uh that is like so obviously on you as you're trying to escape uh, he's got a really really nice watch with a bunch of gold rings and this nice gold chain uh, which clearly doesn't match the rest of his uh really crappy looking clothing <laughs> um and it looks like he's uh topped it off with a bunch of really cheap hair gel and he slicked his hair back <laughs> into, into kind of the the wannabe mobster kind of look Excellent. Uh, how how does he react to this collision? Uh, he thinks this is hilarious. Um, he turns around. <laughs> Some cops, you guys are, and he's gonna take out his phone, take a picture, and then break out running again. <laughs> yeah. 
Ari, two boots? Or Nadine? Um, oh, go ahead. I think that was a great closing beat. Um, I'm happy to call it there. I think that was really effective. Sounds good. <laughs> so that is uh, the, the the first theme book there for Nadine as a bounty hunter. All right. Um, excellent. Uh, who who would like to start with their character's introduction next? Should we just go uh, start at the top with Jacob there? Sure, happy to go next. Okay. Oops. Oops. So tell us uh, a little bit about your, your character and uh, then one, one major pillar, one theme book that we're going to start building him out with. So... Uh, Finn Ennis is a real estate agent, and he has basically been working with his brother specifically in, like, the small business that they have, and with, you know, it's a large city. What does everyone need in this place? Everyone needs a place to stay. So buy, sell, or rent. It doesn't really matter. Like, I know every place in this city, and I know every place that's up for rent. Or if you need a place. The only problem is, Excellent. that involves... such a long day in my routine. <laughs> It's a lot of work, but you put it in and it pays off. Uh, so routine is going to be your your first theme book we look at. Yep. Okay. Uh, so we had a, a bounty hunter. Uh, could you read over your? Questions for routine, and uh, let us know what your your answer to question A is. Yeah. Um, what do, What do you do so, with your time? Uh, real estate agent is what I do with my time, because um, that is his main job, and it's the main idea for mean to go through everything okay. um after that let's see sorry i have to read look up what the question is uh, let's see here which e. which letter do you have that or uh um e. e what did you learn on your daily activities uh, um so knowing like every street in you have to know all the streets, all the neighborhoods. You learn everything about the different buildings when you're having to go through and see every place around. So you Happyville. really happy though. Really is picturesque. It's beautiful. Uh, you can probably tell us a little about Miller Square. We live. Learn all of the different places. Okay. Uh, and what else do you have there? Uh, the last one is the um, that I have right now is H. Okay. H, what quality do you now possess because of your routine? Um, calm in the storm of just, you know, when you are having to show people different apartments. Um, I mean, let's be honest, a number of these places are dumps, but you can't really react when, um, you know, you move something and a rat scurries out. You just gotta distract people by, oh, look over here and ignore 
that thing running past you. <laughs> Some swift misdirection, cunning uh, focus. I well, like if it. If you uh, would don't it? react, they don't react. <laughs> Uh, and then I think we forgot the, uh, the the weakness tag for our bounty hunter. Um, Ari, what was uh, the, the weakness for your routine? Uh, at the end of the day, what are you left with? What are the mundane limits or downsides of your routine? Who or what can interfere with your routine? What happens when you're thrown out of your routine? All right, so I actually chose B, what are the mundane limits or downsides on your routine, and I put not a cop. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, so how about, uh, I, I guess you're not a cop either. Um, <laughs> as a uh, uh, real estate agent, uh, but what's your weakness tag? Uh, weakness tag is uh, specifically um, A, what are you left with, I think, at the end of the day. And it's very specifically a pain behind the eyes. It's like, oh, uh, sometimes just you have such a headache after dealing with this all day. Some of these people uh, are terrible. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Insufferable. But you put up with it and, and take a good chunk of their money. Get them some. Uh, get them the housing they need. Yeah, you look at the bright side. Some of these folks are so happy to finally have a place to stay or their first house, and that makes you feel good, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, Fable two boots. Uh, how about uh, you're a couple that. Uh, is is getting shown a new a new place. All right, how you want to do this? Uh, yeah, abs. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, all right, we just we just need to to make sure that we don't look too enthusiastic. But but I think this could be the one. I hope so. I mean, we've been looking for a long time. Yeah. Not a... this. It depends on how much they're going to negotiate it for. If this isn't our yeah. budget, we might have missed. All right, so I, I, another I, loan. No, no, no. I think we can. I think we can. I think we can pull this off. Oh, he, uh, he's there in the window. He's, he's. Uh, uh, come on, let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Yes. Um, and he kind of uh, wipes his uh, hands on his on his pants, uh, trying to look presentable, but it's clear that he's been stressed out for the past few days. Uh, Finn, what what uh, what is this place that you're showing? Uh, this is going to be one of one one of the townhomes. It's. One of the ones, it is connected to another townhome, but it at least has, you know, a small yard. It's really good for, you know, sort of a starter home, people who are getting set up in the city. It's within people's price ranges. <clears throat> it Picturesque street, and uh, Pappyville, uh, large oak tree outside the townhome with, uh, with some crows nesting in the in the branches. Oh no, that is far too idealistic. There's not going to be a tree. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, this is this is like there's like sp um, spray dye on the like brown patches on the lawn to make it look green. Um, Excellent. There's a there's a live laugh love like uh, oh, of thing course. that that you like, like that. that you just hang up to like to to hide like a you know a, a peeling section of cracked wallpaper. There's at least, like, you know, it's relatively new, as in built in the last few decades, mm. but it still just kind of matches the rest of the houses around. So it's right at the point where you can say it's new and not be lying, but it's real close? Yes. <laughs> Fair enough. 
hey, none of the pipes are lead. That you know that is that, that is, is a, good. Yeah, I think I I think you know we 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 uh we come in and we're greeted by whatever like uh music you have playing in the background. I I think I'm a little bit pregnant, but I'm not trying to look it. Yeah, Makes would sense. definitely never make any assumptions for that because that will be terrible for you. So, but don't, don't want to do in. one of the. Oh, when's the baby due? Excuse me. Yeah, but no, but if but, they say but it, I think great. I think you know <laughs> that that's like this is the kind of thing you watch for. Oh. They're they're having a kid. These people are are actually looking to buy, as much as we might want to, you know, pretend that we're not. Yeah. Welcome in. Um, can I show you around, or would you prefer to have a few minutes to walk around yourselves and then ask any questions? Uh, I'd like a tour. Great. No problem. Well, as you can clearly see, this is the entryway. It's you don't have a really formal entrance. This goes straight into your living room. It has an open floor plan, so you can see the kitchens right through there. You don't have a formal dining room, but there is a spot right here where I think you could have a nice dining table set up. So it's sort of an eat-in area where you could have it. But it does have, have a lovely view. You have a st the standard... Uh... Uh, open house bowl of limes set on the table. Uh, not really those. Um, they look nice, but they don't have a strong enough smell. And also, they, most of the time, they'll just be fake. Uh, if you're going to put something for decoration, just use dried flowers. You, you take them from from one place you show to the next. You just got like this this vase of dried flowers that you carry with you. Oh, I mean it's multiple ones, but it, like depending which section you're doing that day. Um, from there, it's like so. I know you are had mentioned that you're looking for a couple different places. This one has two bedrooms. It has have an extra office space. You could use it as an extra bedroom. It just doesn't have a closet. So if you want a wardrobe, it could function as a third bedroom, just so you know ahead of time. That's and I, good to hear. I think this is, this is where something goes wrong in the most banal way possible. I think, I think there's a knock on the door. And uh, Raina and Tim, would you like to be another couple interested in the place? Or do I, have sure. a, do I have a pair of people? I can do it. You can do that. That sound, that sound good? That. What was that? Uh, Tim, I can't hear you. Oh, you said me? Okay, yeah. Cool with oh, me. There we go. <laughs> okay. Just gonna hope. So you, you and Raina, uh, are you are you married? What was the question? So Tim and Reyna, uh, you you knock on the door because you're interested in this place as well. Uh, are you two married? Sure. Okay. Uh, you hear footsteps from uh, inside, and uh, the door is answered. Oh my God! <laughs> hi. This is the open house, right? Uh, actually, this isn't an open house. Um. I have been taking by appointments. Um, did you well, have something scheduled? You're you're Mr. Ennis, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. You texted me to come by today. Um, I look over at uh the agent and kind of give you a questioning look and kind of uh wring my hands. Uh, are we in the getting in the middle of something? Just one second. What quick question? Uh, 
does that say it's from DNS or FNS? Um, um, D, I think. Okay, I'm so sorry. My brother has double booked and he is not here yet. So I believe you're just, if you're on time, he is late and I will absolutely apologize for that. Um, if you would like, I can have you come in and you're welcome to wait here in the entryway or have a seat in the living room. Well, I mean, since you're already showing the house, can't we just come along? Right, honey? I mean, that's ridiculous that we have to wait. Yeah, I mean, that's the least they could do. We're already here. Right? Uh, on time, I might add. Pull over, <laughs> uh, boots to the side, and say, Listen, uh, I know we had high hopes, but I'm not sure we can win a... Uh, I'm not sure we can win against these people. They look a little bit more yeah. liquid than we are. Yeah. All right. Maybe we should go and cut our losses and go and try that Miller Square space. I guess. Oh, I I'm, I'm sorry. I really thought this one would work. Yeah. Hey. Hey, Edith, I'm, um, I, I'm sorry. I, I think we're going to go. You can... Um, uh, it's 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 entirely all right. We don't we don't we don't need to be intru uh, intruding. Th thank you so much for for showing the house. Yes, thank you, thank you for your time. Welcome. If you have any questions or need any information about the place, you have my number. Just let me know. And if you want to see any other places, just let me know, and I'm happy to show you around to some other spots in the city. Sure. There's a yeah, great like pizzeria it. in Miller Square. <laughs> great pizzeria. And a, a one-stop I... shop across the way. I'm like wandering I around oof. looking at all the dents. I oof a little as the, the baby kicks all the way out. I'm going to kill Duncan. <laughs> Do we want to close on that note? That's a I great think, line. I think so, yeah. <laughs> Stupid Duncan. Stealing no, your commissions. Duncan head. <laughs> oh. Excellent. Nice nice little introduction to... Uh, uh, to uh, how do you pronounce it? Finn? Yeah. Finn. Okay. Great. Uh, who, who'd like to introduce their character next? Uh, Reyna? Uh, sure. We've, we just heard from you you want a break oh or... no that, that's fine okay. i can i can go uh i'm just trying to remember how to start <laughs> <laughs> oh the so mine is actually also routine yeah okay that's a pretty normal thing you know am i adding it or are you adding it uh i can do that if you, it, would you like the practice yeah i can do it Okay. Um, so she's an EMT. And it's the questions, right? And yeah. So uh, what do you do with your time? What, uh, what What is a normal day like as an EMT? Uh, she goes out on a lot of calls all, all day, sometimes all night. Um, the shifts are varying. So. Ooh, that's that's tough. Yeah. Yeah. Uh your your partner in the ambulance, uh do do you drive or do they? I usually do. Um but I had as a what was there was another one of the questions. Hang on, I wrote who, it who usually helps you? Yeah, yeah. Uh yeah, that's it. D. It's my partner James. Okay. Yeah. And then I had uh like, what do I learn on my daily activities? I think it was E, is um, uh, different life-saving techniques like for different situations. Yeah, totally. Um, uh, Boots, would you like to be her partner? Uh, sure, absolutely. 
Uh, Fable, not... what are they responding to? You, you've been injured. Um, I'm an electrician uh, who made a mistake. Um, and I pretty much just almost stopped my heart and fell off a ladder. Who knows? Maybe you did, and the, the fall just knocked it back into into operation. I guess. <laughs> Either way, I was an expert who got too cocky, and um, the person who had installed the wires before me did not know what they were doing. <laughs> well, it looks like Ella, we got a. Oh, Ella, sorry. Go you ahead. Found... Ella, you you found this uh, electrician on the ground and and called the police for for assistance. <laughs> uh, so you're you're there when uh, when they pull up. Am I Matilda or am I somebody else? Uh, you're uh, somebody else. Okay. Hey, buddy, stay with us. Come on, come on, don't die. Hey, EMPs. <laughs> she kind of tries to wave them over. Come on. There she is. Guys, dying. We run over to him and we 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 drive up onto the um onto the lawn and you know uh uh I don't start think his uh, heart is beating. And he fell off the pole. Right. She she's uh, check for check for a heartbeat, see if there's anything at all is very weak. It's there, but it's weak. I'm uh, going, and I have all these bags, bags like over me. Um, I I pull out the defibrillator and and start like passing it to you as I'm as I'm pulling out the various bits of supplies that we need. The electrician's eyes are glazing over as you do this. <laughs> we start CPR and use the defibrillator and try to get him back. Come on, buddy, you can make it. Can you hear me? Can you talk? Uh, he kind of looks up and his uh his arm twitches and it looks like he's trying to speak, but he can't get any air out or in. It, she asked the the passerby, "Do you know this guy? Do you know his name at all?" No, I've never seen him before. I just was walking by and I noticed when he fell off the pole. I think he got a shock. Oof. That's what... James? Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm, 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 he probably has I'm a name badge, in. right? So, so on his coat. What's it say on his coat? Uh, his Dave Johnson. Utility ID. <laughs> Dave Johnson. <laughs> Dave Johnson. Come on, Dave, Dave. Stay with me. Stay with me, Dave. Yep. Yeah, it starts to come back a little stronger. Uh, use the defibrillator, and he... It, it shocks him, and he rolls over. Ow! Damn it! Ugh. What, I, what there's, happened? There's, there's, there's radio chatter going on as I'm, you know, going and reciting the the different uh, uh, vitals or whatever. the the <laughs> Whatever the medical numbers are. I know. I was like... I, I can't. I can't think of any of them. <laughs> so, City we'll Hospital. Get it. This is Unit Two Fourteen. City Hospital is Unit Two Fourteen. We're four minutes out. We've got a thirty-eight-year-old male. Uh, looks like he's been electrocuted. Uh, vitals are stable, but uh, we'll keep you informed. And Thanks I think that's him. when the conduit wire starts just spraying sparks from the pole above. (laughs) Everybody back. We'll call in the fire department. Okay. And you, uh, you get the hell out of there. (laughs) We, we have a, we have a, this, this heroic kind of shaky cam, uh, um, of you going and pulling, pulling Dave out from the like falling sparking wires. (laughs) <laughs> we have a the yes. transformer explodes as uh Throw him as over you his shoulder. like <laughs> yes, and I'm of course recording you... all this with my cell phone. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so I can sell yeah. it to the news, you know. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> Excellent.
get him in and speed off. Uh, um, quick question for you, Morgan. I'm sorry. Uh, no, yeah. I didn't put tags or anything because I'm not sure what to do. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so to add the tags there, um, the... Uh... I'm not even sure what to add, honestly. <laughs> I'm real new uh, at this. I want to. I want to say it's the uh, the lightning bolt that you click to to add a a power tag. Okay. It's oh, I just choose the letters that we have. Okay. And then oh okay, yeah. So a, what do you do with your time? There we go. And so you can replace unnamed tag with you know your job as an EMT. What do you do? Uh, Drinking coffee, saving lives. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I like that better. I should have done that. <laughs> uh, okay. Who usually helps you is D. Yeah, I had a second one. Oh, there we go. Sorry, I'm slowing it down, guys. No worries. Oh, don't worry about it. Yeah, no worries. Okay. You had D, who usually helps you, and then and oh, what quality do you now possess because of your routine? Was that was that H? That's H. It's H. Okay. Uh, so this was like life saving techniques and stuff. So yeah. Or right, so, uh, what did you learn on your daily activities? Is that what it is then? E. Oh yes, it was E. Sorry, sorry. I don't know how to get rid of that one because I chose the wrong. You've got a friend in me. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Oh. Uh, I can't change the question because I chose H. Oh, uh, that that's okay. It, it, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't actually matter for the, the way the character sheet's built. When we do character advancement. One of the things that you can do to level up your character is add a new power tag. So uh, if you give this theme some attention and uh, activate its weakness tags uh, three times, then you can get another power tag on the theme oh, okay. uh, or another weakness tag uh, if you want it to have two weaknesses to, to work off of. Um, or the routine has a bunch of other options as uh, benefits in, instead if you level up with one of those. Uh, How do I choose, add a... If you choose to add another power tag, then we'll just, you know, do E instead of H or something else entirely. Okay. And and how do I add the weakness tag? Uh, the weakness is the anchor. So it's anchor. weighing you down. Oh, goodness. Okay. It was B. Ah, okay. What are the mundane limits or downsides of your routine? Uh, it was the long hours and the traumatic events, so basically always being tired. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, who's up next? Uh, Tim, Ella, who do you want to introduce your character? I just need a couple more minutes on my stuff. Okay. Yeah, well, we're trying you to got figure the, out uh... the defining event. I adding one to my sheet, but I don't know if I understand it or not. Okay. Um. So well, as I long as you had, got one one theme, we can. That's all we're going to use for right now. Okay. Well, I picked the defining event, which was the death in the family, so her mm -hmm. mother's death. Um, and then I, oh, hold on, let me get back to where I was writing. There it is. Um, come on, Google, play along with me. <laughs> 
Would you like me to edit your character sheet? Yeah, if you could. Okay. So I I selected defining event, and then it's a death in the family was what I I picked, and then um, I selected H. What approach to life did you adopt following your defining event? And uh, so uh, I. So for the the defining event first, why is this relationship so important to you? Oh, with her mom. It, yeah. She, it's kind of funny to say her mom raised her, but because her dad was never home, she was glued to her mom from the time she was a little girl. I mean, just her mom taught her everything she knew. And her mom was a really strong woman, and she just thought she'd always be there. And then one day she wasn't, and uh, it's left this huge hole for her now that she's gone. Okay. Uh, so I'll put uh, why is the relationship so important? Stuck like glue. <laughs> what uh, What other questions did you want to answer there? Um, I had answered H. What approach to life did you adopt following your defining event? So where Sorry. is she kind of just defining... been... Bobbing defining, along. I, I was I was doing defining relationship, not event. <laughs> oh. That okay. Yeah. What what strong emotion did the defining event leave you with with your mother's death? That's grief. That was a. <laughs> I mean, it, it, the, the what it left her with was just grief. I mean, that she hasn't been able to deal with because she's having you know all the time that she used to have to spend with her mom is now consumed having to care for her dad. Okay. Um, and so there's just not been an outlet for her grief. So she just keeps suppressing it and kind of numbing herself by watching these movies over and over and over and over. Uh, are you going to be able to use this powerful grief in a positive way? I think Cause, so eventually cause she's th this gonna... sort of is answering the the, the weakness tag, what emotional scar or baggage did the defining event leave you with? Yeah, yeah, it definitely answers the weakness. I think okay. in terms of a positive, I think it will ultimately make her stronger to be without her mom. Because when you have someone that's strong in your life, you tend to rely on them for a lot. And that's part of why she's been in this, I wouldn't call it a rut, but just kind of in this, I mean, 20 years as a cashier at 7-Eleven, really? <laughs> you know? It's That's like a tough job. Yeah, you know, it, it's a tough job to be a cashier, but, you know, it, it's like to never have any incentive to want to make more money than that or be a manager or any of that stuff, right? You know, and there was never anybody really pushing her, and so she's got to learn to push herself. You know, it's like, do I want more out of life than than what I have? Because she knows ultimately her dad will die and it's going to be just her, right? You know, you start thinking about that stuff. Is, is this the life I want for the next 20 years? So I think it will ultimately result in her bettering herself. Okay. Something so, like, I can't yes. rely on you anymore. Well, she's never been able to rely on her father. And so knowing that and the fact that his health is failing, she's having to become a lot more self-reliant already. And I think so, that will just grow. Yeah. So uh, what, what approach to life did you adopt following that defined event? So... Um, I, the way I uh, the way I wrote it down was seize the day because their number is limited. <laughs> okay. So you know much more about go outside your comfort zone, do things that you never thought you'd do. Um, you know maybe 
if you want to watch a silent film, maybe find out where you could watch silent films with other people instead of just alone in your room. Um, you know, stuff like that. So that she expands her world. So, And I think that's how she becomes involved with the group is part of that expanding her world. So, uh, carpe diem sort of idea? Yeah. Okay. Um, so it looks like you've got the, the weakness tag question following your defined event. What responsibility or social burdens do you have to shoulder? And that's caring for your father. Mm-hmm. Um, and you've also described the emotional scar baggage of, of grief. Um, so we can we can take off one of those. You don't have to. If if you if you want two weakness tags, maybe we could do two power tags and two weakness tags. Okay. Uh, but you can you can totally uh, answer a third power tag instead of having two weaknesses if you'd like. Okay. Yeah, I think um, I'd rather do that. And I think okay. probably the weakness. I think having to care for her father is going to be a big one. Okay. Because uh, it's sort of, it, it's kind of like having a dog. You know, I can't <laughs> leave my dad all day, right? Yeah. I've got to go home and make sure he's got his medication. I've got to make sure he's fed. I've got to make sure, you know. <laughs> so she's now got this extra responsibility above and beyond her job that is going to interfere with her freedom to do other things. And she's got to figure that out. Did you have a third power tag question you were thinking of? Uh, no, not immediately. Okay. Then let me, let me ask you if there was a, a mundane but useful object you obtained during this event that you've kept with you. Probably something of her mom's. Um, yeah. A machete. No. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't Call of Cthulhu. <laughs> yeah. No, kind of one of the items that I, I keep thinking of is there's this little TV that's available that you can load videos onto. I mean, it's like a little, probably about the size of a, a pack of cigarettes, but thicker. Okay. And you can load videos on it. And I imagine her having that from her mom from when her mom had to go to treatment. So okay. she could sit there and, and watch videos with her mom. Because we don't have smartphones, right? So we need to have a, yeah, a stand it. Like flip phone era sort of. Yeah. Lo lower tech than. Yeah, not smartphones. And yeah. so I'm just wondering if something like that. I know it's available now. Yeah, and sure. So something like that she got from her mom. So it's kind of loaded up, you know, with with her mom's favorite movies. And so she's oh. got that that she keeps with her. She keeps it in her bag. Uh, and what so I think a about video that item, I think of... a little what? Oh, I said it's a little video box instead of music box. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, what that's I think sweet. about that for later when her her mythos starts coming through is, you know, she'll have that with her. So if she hears music or hears a voice, the source is with her, right? She doesn't Indeed. have to be seated in front of a television at home for those yeah. things to happen. So it kind of uh, has a practical character thing yeah. to go with it. Um, so the way that character development happens is when you uh, turn away from your daily life and give something up mm -hmm. or when you don't focus on the powers that the mythos is trying to get you to use the theme book flips from logos to mythos or mythos to logos mm -hmm. um, so if you have this this uh video box uh 
as a, as a power tag here, if this theme flips to Mythos, that would be really awesome. You can still have the box and it'll talk to you or like yeah. kind of creepy voices. Um, but it won't give you a plus one on your rolls. Yeah. It's Which is fine. For, yeah. 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 Um, there's, there's much more to all of your characters than these four aspects. Um, these are just the four that are going to be what, what get focused on um, and give you bonuses to the rolls. Gotta start um, somewhere, right? Yeah. So what, um, and actually, so I, I've been saying, you know, give you bonuses to rolls. The, uh, the city myth system is powered by the apocalypse um, and fate sort of mashup. Uh, all of the rolls are 2d6, two six-sided dice, uh, and then plus or minus whatever sort of one, two, three, uh, based on the power tags you use and the situation that you're in. So whatever the, the uh, status is that's helping you the most and hindering you the most, those get added to your role uh, mm -hmm. or subtracted. And then any power tags that you put in uh, get added to the role. And a success is uh, 10 or above. A mixed success, partial success is 7, 8, 9. So on 2d6, when you roll a 6 or under, that's a miss and something bad happens. Um, seven and nine is a mixed success, and then ten and above is uh, full success. Um, so when I'm saying you're you know, getting the plus one, that's the range of numbers that we're dealing with. Yep. Um, okay. And it's also interesting because as the GM, as the master of ceremonies, uh, I don't roll. We just go off of your rolls. Uh, huh. And what what level of success uh, you you hit or not? Um, so I don't have like a a monster stat block with AC and damage to you know take a turn. I just react off your your rolls. Uh, That's cool. cool. Yeah. Uh, so what what sort of scene do you want to have people here uh, walk you through? Oh, geez. Yeah, it, it seems like maybe we're in for a a, a less action-packed one. Yeah. <laughs> um, we could either do something at the store uh, or something with her dad. Are the two that I'm thinking? Let's and do so something you, with her dad since we've got. We're working on the defining event. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I'm thinking, you know, it's only been a couple months since her mom has passed away. Uh, they're starting to fall into a bit of a pattern um, or a schedule of how she is able to work her job, but still make sure dad is set for the day. Um, he obviously doesn't like being reliant on her, but he doesn't really have a choice. <laughs> so, uh, so I think it, we it, need uh, someone to play your dad, Matilda. Yeah, his name uh, is Jeff. Jeff, that sounds a lot like Fable. <laughs> you know, uh, I I didn't pick it up at first, but that does sound a lot like Fable. It's yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've got F's in there and an E. It's, yeah. It's practically the same thing. What? I mean, uh, some extra consonants and vowels. Just whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, All right. Uh, I missed a little bit of that. Uh, who is Jeff yeah, in so, the context? Jeff is her father and he is ill. And uh, Matilda is at this point having to act as sole caregiver for him um whereas mom was help, able to help until her health got really terrible at the end uh so matilda has been trying to adjust it's not perfect yet uh so there's a little bit of abrasion there but uh, it's getting better so um yeah so i don't know we can just kind of play it with 
I'm thinking uh, with Matilda coming home from work or getting ready to go to work, one of those two. All right. Um, the rela your relationship with your father is uh... a yeah, little rough. The... He was never really around when she was growing up, so uh, it's kind of like trying to take care of a stranger who doesn't have a choice. <laughs> you know? That makes sense. Yeah. So let's do it with me coming home from, from work, because then I can be tired and annoyed. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Which is harder to care for somebody when you're hard, when you're tired and annoyed. No. So uh, dad, so here's, here's my keys in the door. And uh, I come in and I toss them in the bowl by the, on the console table. Dad, I'm home. I brought chicken. Wonderful. Um, could you, uh, I, I can't get the TV to work. Could you uh, help me? You might need batteries, new batteries. Uh, give me a second. Let me get the chicken out on the table, um, or on your tray. And then I'll, I'll see if I can, if I can figure out what's up with the TV. Okay. Uh, and let's uh -huh. get your meds. Um, I'm a little late getting home tonight, so I want to make sure we get your meds on time. Uh, so uh, this is Wednesday, right? So you don't get the blue pills. Oh, this is so complicated. Okay. Yeah, I got it. Okay. I know which selection pill. Okay. Got it. Um, I'll have dinner ready in like five minutes so if you can just give me a little bit of time until i can look at the tv uh it'll be all set um does that work for you dad it, sure i'll just sit here in silence i guess okay thank you so she's in the kitchen she's kind of banging cabinets and gets out plates and everything so Five minutes later, she comes out with and puts his TV tray out in front of his chair and puts down basically KFC or the equivalent thereof, um, whatever they have downtown where she works. And uh, it's got a little ear of corn and, you know, some mashed potatoes and then a piece of chicken. Uh, and she brought him a beer so he can have a beer. Uh, which is probably not great with his medication, but it keeps him quiet in the evenings. <laughs> so uh, she has started giving him an evening beer. Uh, let me see the remote, Dad. Does the, I, uh, uh, does the pizza sure. shop have, have chicken? Does what? Does the, uh, does the downtown your, your one -stop pizza shop, shop you... have chicken? Where she works doesn't have chicken. They have uh, all-day hot dogs and pretzels and a couple other hot things but not chicken so she had to to stop on the subway and or on the bus line and pick it up so not super hot but uh still satisfying i don't know anybody who can turn down kfc <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, My, so the she'll the She'll fiddle around with the TV. She has like no mechanical abilities whatsoever. So she'll try the same things that Ella tries, which is try spinning the batteries, try swapping the batteries, see if she can get either of those to work. And if not, uh, she'll go try and find new batteries or take them out of some other remote in the house. <laughs> So I don't imagine uh, they have a whole lot on hand. Um, uh, your dad is trying not to look at your eyes, and um, you notice that the, the remote has been very clearly dropped at some point. Uh, so, Dad, I don't think it's the batteries. Um, it looks like we might have to replace the remote, which is a little more difficult than just replacing the batteries we'll have to wait for me to get paid um i don't get paid until friday so 
Um, they, they make these things called a universal remote. I don't know how they work, but they're supposed to work with all kinds of TVs. So hopefully it'll work with ours. So we'll, we're just going to have to wait. Um, until then, you're just going to have to have to get up and switch the TV. I know that's hard, so let's try and find something in the morning that you think you could watch all day. Or maybe I could put some movies in for you, and you could just loop movies all day. That might work, I guess. Sorry about the hassle. Uh, he, he looks guilty now that you can tell that you found out that he broke the controller. <laughs> It happens, Dad. Don't worry about it. It's just a thing, right? Things can be replaced. People can't. Yeah, I guess. And he kind of uh, takes a sad bite of his chicken. And fades to black. Fades to black. Oh. It's pressing okay. peak into Matilda's life. Yeah, that's great. This is not what she had pictured for herself. <laughs> no. Um, Tim, Tim, can you, uh, can you pick up the mood? What, um, tell us a little about your character. Yep. Uh, yeah. So for my, the big dog, Jack, um, uh, yep. Just, uh, I kind of twist. I said boxer in the beginning. I think I'm going to transition to MMA to give it a little bit more yeah. broad aspecting on that but uh yeah for one of his logos on that i think i was gonna like just pick the training one because it kind of makes sense being uh in a fighter uh, realm yeah uh, so i i assume for question a what do you do or know best it's mma or yep. is the mma yeah, put martial arts there. okay nope yeah i've uh i've kind of like risen mostly like to the top and i've I have like a celebrity stature essentially uh, nice. at this point in my life. So that's kind of like where I'm at on that. Cool. Way to go. Uh, yeah. Doing big things. The, uh, you know, the, the, the big news networks uh, are, are definitely covering your matches. Um, you know, Monty Wolf Media is, is there at, at all the big ones. Well, they better um, be. Hey, you're you're the big game now. Um, what what other power tech questions did you go with? Uh, I'm not sure what the letter is because I already picked them, but I I put them all in a word document so I can just follow along. Uh, one of them uh, is yeah. what quality or trait did your training foster? Okay. And the E. Yep. So E. Oh, you got I them put in down. Already. Yep. Yeah. I put them all in there as uh, people were doing their stuff. Um, yeah, I essentially put like, I named it, I see your moves, but you know, being an analytical fighter, you get the, you get the tendency to read people, uh, movements and then anticipate what's going to happen. So I just put like reading your opponent or reading people essentially. Nice. Um, I see your moves and, uh, who is coach Rick? Coach Rick, Rick Razzo, uh, that is my trainer um, at the local spot that I go to to get any of my training in and spar with people and things like that. He's been my trainer throughout my uh, inception in my career, essentially. Excellent. What, um, what, what does he do for you that you can't do on your own? I would say he teaches me to um, handle my emotions correctly because Jack will sometimes have a tendency to let um, his emotions get the best of him, which can cloud his judgment and uh, the way he, sh he should go about a fight. Example would be like doing like uh, the pre-fight stuff and then you uh, go up there in front of the media together and then sometimes an opponent could get under my skin on certain occasions, but Coach Rick has taught me to uh, not let those comments or certain situations get the best of me uh, for that stuff. Okay. 
and your weakness tag, uh, what, what's the most problematic flaw for you? Uh, I chose the one is uh, who is after you due to your prominence in this field. And oh, I just, I yeah, yeah, I just put like a, a broad thing. People jealous of my fame because um, my dad was already wealthy before I even got into this. And people hate to see uh, a, a rich, a rich kid build his own path or whatever. And now, uh, especially people in, in the fighting territory, they don't think I belong there. Um, so I kind of had some bad blood with people that's already, uh, in that, in that field sort of. Okay. I see how that, how that works then. Nice. Uh, what, what do you think about a scene of a, uh, an MMA match that you're about to start? Uh, Jack, Jack had a an accident at like an ma M, mma match that made him get cybernetics is that right was i following that correctly yes that does happen uh yep do we want to do how... do we do we want to do that scene where you get you know where you get broken and need to be in like you lose the match or whatever yeah, happens we, i don't I, know what happens i think that would be great for the uh the the scene when your your mythos starts taking in oh we're doing that as a separate scene okay let's yeah oh yeah because i also chose a defining event and i was thinking the defining events probably whenever i get injured or whatever yeah right, uh, right, right. my other okay. teams well, that ma that makes sense okay um so uh Ari, do would would you like to be the announcer announcing this match and the, the announcer slash ref. Uh, honestly, I wouldn't even know what to say. As a ref. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Would Would you like to be the the opponent, just getting pummeled? Then. Sure. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, d uh, boots. Would you like to be the the announcer ref? Sure. <laughs> okay. And uh, who who uh, is. You know, assuming we're putting a low threshold on accuracy, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think we are. Unless, I mean, does does someone else want to be the, the the ref and do a the announcement? No, but no, if okay. my skills yeah. at EMT stuff is an, any indication, we're definitely keeping it a low threshold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, we might um, need the EMT soon, depending how this fight goes. Yeah. Um, uh, Jacob, would you like to be uh, Rick? Is it? Yeah, Coach Rick. Sure. Okay. So we've got uh, Coach Rick and Jack uh, talking to each other, trying to, to to get ready before the fight. Jack, is this someone that you fought before? Uh, no, fresh opponent. Okay, uh, Ari, who who is he up against? Um, let's see. <laughs> they <laughs> they call him Terry the Texan. <laughs> Terry the Texan. Terry the Texan. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I think we have a, a nemesis in the in the works. <laughs> <laughs> it, with a very poor country accent, so just be aware. It's this is all just for show. Uh, you're totally <laughs> not from Texas, and it, it you just you just need a shtick of some kind. Exactly. Uh, uh, okay, so uh, Rick, pipe pipe him up. Yeah, you gotta get in there and get rid of the, the schlub. He's not even really from Texas. So that's a fake southern <laughs> accent. Nobody knows who that guy is. You're the one they're all here to see and cheer for. So get in there and give them the show that they're waiting for. Oh, don't you worry, Rick. They're gonna get a show. And that accent that he had during the, the pregame event is totally fake. I don't think he's from Texas <laughs> at all. That's what I just said. 
That's not a southern accent. No, like, I can do better southern accent than that. No, <laughs> that ain't no southern accent. Like, <laughs> you don't even sound we, nothing like that. We, we cut back to the, the pre-show where uh, they're, they're taking photographs. Uh, Raina, Ella, your, your two photographers just dishing on how bad his accent is. <laughs> Seriously, did did you hear that? <laughs> uh, I have a Canadian accent, and I sound more southern than that guy. <laughs> Texan, let's hear you talk. Let's see. He's just kind of in this little area, looking down. He's, you know, pumping himself up. He's all sweaty. He got the towel around him. I don't know if that's what MMA does, but, you know, bear with me. That they do now. <laughs> this is our world. And he's like, boy, I'll... Boy. <laughs> you learned to talk Southern on YouTube. It's... From a Russian. <laughs> The photographer leans over and goes, it's, it's y'all. All y'all. Oh, and he's like, y'all. <laughs> That's all he says. That's nothing else. He's just like, make sure oh. that her. <laughs> Somebody get this guy some sweet tea. <laughs> the two of you, like, snap the obligatory pictures. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, cut, cut back to the, the piping them up. Our, our announcer is about to uh, announce the, the start of the match. Yeah, just go in, do what you do, and make sure that at the end of it, it that, te that well, no, that fake Texan is on the ground, and you're the one standing up there when the bell rings. This is why you're the best in the biz, Rick. You just hype me up. That's all I need. I have all the skill already inside of me. I don't need anything else. And then he'll just like hand out his gloves to you to dap him up. And he's like ready to get out there. He's that's pretty much all he needs. Go get it. Okay, uh boot kick kick this fight off. Ladies and gentlemen, fight fans around the world, get ready for an um, electrifying bout. We are going to have two great champions uh, hungry for victory uh, facing off at each other. Here in the red corner, we have the indomitable Jack, our, um, our uh, standing undefeated defender. And here in the blue corner, we have our challenger, uh, Two uh, two hundred pounds and uh and six uh six feet tall. The Texan, uh Terry, uh Terry Texan. <laughs> uh, get ready for uh heart um heart pounding action and uh and a fight to remember. Uh, we will see. Um, uh. Two uh two men enter, but uh uh but only one can be the victor. Now, fight. Uh, Tim, Tim, let's let's make the first roll of the campaign here. Um, give give me two d six plus three. We can we can use your fight in his life. I see your moves and Coach Rick. Um, so everyone can follow along. There, the way to roll. Uh, the core moves is one drop down. The change the game next to that is the different moves you can do. Uh, so this one is going to be go toe to toe. Uh, you are you're fighting uh, mano y mano with uh, Terry the Texan. So click on the left click on the the three power tags. And then choose core move, go toe to toe, and execute. Uh, 
All right. So core moves stays on that, right? And then go yep. toe to toe. And then you do I click anything on the theme tags for Yeah, if you if you left click it'll give it a positive and if you right click it'll take it away. So left click on the the three positive power tags that you you have going for you. So you see them highlighted in yellow, then just click execute move. Hmm, I don't oh, see them highlighted. Uh, nope. Uh, the the sheet needs to be toggled off. We're in edit mode. That's what it is. So close the lock, make the lock purple on your screen in the top. Uh, I gotcha. There we go. Yeah. And then in, it's, is it attention that gets the three pluses? Uh, I don't see any yeah. pluses anywhere else. Yeah. Oh, no, you're not going to uh, click those to, to get the plus. You just left click the tags themselves. So like if you mouse over it, they'll they'll highlight yellow. And then you can click on it to add it as to the roll. Ah, I see. All right, cool. All right, so we got those selected core moves. Go toe to toe. Execute. Uh, it already does the modifier right for the three that was selected, so it'll automatically do two d six plus three. And yeah. Oh, huh, that was a private role for some reason. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> what it turned out to be? Uh, a nine. A nine. Okay, so that's a that's a success. Um, so uh, it's it's a partial success. You've got um, we, we you 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 know spar back and forth, and uh, the the Texan. Uh, you underestimate him a bit. Um, there you, you get in a couple of a good jabs that, that it's surprising, but uh, you know, Jack, Jack's not going to take this. Uh, and he just ends up pummeling you. Um, but there's a, uh, a, a photographer in the audience uh, who is there uh, not with any of the... Uh, uh, you know, news news agencies. Um, it is there someone with a, a telephoto lens in the back, and they've caught uh, a, a picture of you that is really unflattering. Of me? Yes. Oh wow! I assume I don't see that, but you, no, there. They're good at their job. They they get this photo. You'll see it. Oh, it'll it'll be all over the rags tomorrow. But uh, no one no one who you know actually follows any any sports is going to pay attention to to that. Okay. Um. Let us uh pause here. We've we've gotten everyone's characters sort of uh start it off um and we'll we'll take a quick break i don't want to get in real quick that yeah the texan having lost <laughs> now is going to be called the terry cloth texan <laughs> <laughs> nice. awesome before he fades into obscurity forevermore i wanted that to get in <laughs> perfect <laughs> Fantastic. Terry cloth Texan. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay.
Okay, back from break. Thank you all for for sticking with us. We're going to oh god, yeah, what you were what you were just saying about all the echo. That's that's happening now. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> uh we we can just cut all that. Um thanks for bearing with us. We are going to continue next week. Look forward to seeing everyone for more character creation uh Friday the 12th. Have a good night.